Welcome to Lesson 7, Using Debits and Credits to Record Financial Transactions. You'll recall from the earlier lessons that the fundamental accounting equation is assets on the left must always equal the source of those assets, either the liabilities or the owner's equity. But the fundamental accounting equation is assets equals the sum of liabilities and equity. Remember when Mike started his business, he took 40,000 of his personal cash and he invested this personal cash by making a personal investment to finance his business in the amount of $40,000. So we added $40,000 to Mike's cash and we added $40,000 to Mike's equity to begin his business. Uh, if you remember, he also borrowed $210,000 from the bank where his cash went up and his liabilities went up. And the key is that every time we added something to the left, we had to have an equal balancing act on the right. So uh, when he put money in to start, assets went up 40, equity up 40. When he borrowed money, assets up, liabilities up. Noting that we always equal with every transaction. Now, um, we can credit today the founder, uh, or actually not the founder, but he was the first to document the fact that the left must always equal the right. And the gentleman who uh, first documented the fact that left must always equal right in the accounting world, his name was Luca Pacioli. And he wrote a famous book in 1494 called The Summa. And he wrote this book in a Venetian, I'd say Venetian Italian dialect of the day, not in Latin. And he could have written in Latin because Luca was a Franciscan monk. And also interestingly, he was a good friend uh, of Leonardo da Vinci. In fact, Pacioli and da Vinci actually were roommates for some time uh, in Milan uh, prior to the 1490s. So that's a fascinating bit of history. But Pacioli said, look, left must always equal right in this accounting world. And this fundamental accounting equation must always hold assets equal liabilities, and Luca referred to equity as capital. But today we call it assets equal liabilities plus equity. Well, let's remove these numbers right here, clear those contents, and let's go ahead and unhide these rows. And Pacioli, since he didn't have uh, what I would call uh, electronic spreadsheets or computers uh, then, he had to rely on a manual system that was uh, built to, uh, to reduce human error. And so Pacioli's system said, hey, if assets go up, list the increase on the left. Cash went up 40,000. If liabilities or equity go up, Pacioli said, increases in liabilities and equity, list them on the right. And the little uh, system he devised was known as double entry bookkeeping because every transaction affects at least two accounts and that the left-hand side of the equation changes must always equal the right-hand side of the equation. Let's get some more practice. When Mike put in 210,000 from his personal earnings, he still didn't have enough cash, so he then went out and borrowed money from the bank. Cash up, liabilities up. Now, with the 250,000 of financing, he was able to spend 180,000 of that cash, cash down, but he got a building, another asset in its place. We still balance. And then I think he spent $2,400 cash on an insurance policy. Cash went down, and up, $2,400, and prepaid insurance went up. The key is, whatever you do on the left must always equal what you do on the right. Now, let's take this and go to the debit credit explanation. Pacioli's definition of debit was put something on the left of a two column approach. So notice here, so notice here that Mike has two columns for each account, not one column, and that in all these changes in his transactions, there are no, no such thing as a negative number. When Mike put cash in the business to start his business with transaction one, cash left, contributed equity right. Cash left, notes payable right. Cash asset right, building asset left. Cash asset right, prepaid insurance asset left. Then he spends $1,000, cash asset left, 
equity down. Equity down, it's equity earned, and a reduction in equity earned is known as an expense. This was advertising expense. Then he bought, in entry number six, 10 bikes for 1,000 each. Cash down 10,000, bike inventory up 10,000. Next, he sells all 30,000 bikes for cash. Uh, he, he received 3,000 for each of the 10 bikes, so cash went up 30, and his equity earned went up 30. An increase in equity earned as a result of selling goods or services is known as revenue. When the bikes were sold, we then had to write them off the books by actually uh, subtracting $10,000 from bike inventory and reducing equity earned. This is called expense. We'll call that cost of bike sold expense. This expense right here was advertising. Now, when you're done posting all these transactions, you can add up everything on the left, add up everything on the right, and you'll get a balance here. Total left minus total right gives you total left on the left right there. And let's format that so we can read that number clearly. And we want to fill that with yellow and put a nice black box around it like we did before. And notice that this number equals with the same number in our single column approach that we did way back in lesson one. If we filled out all of these T accounts and we summed up all the left on the right, and in fact we've done it here, the sum on the right here for equity earned is 30, uh, the left sum is 11, so 30 minus 11 gives us 19, we could fill everything out and get that guy right there. And these numbers you'll see at the bottom are the same exact numbers actually as what we have in the single column approach. So we highlight those. Notice the 86 there, 86.6 equals 86.6 there. The 19,000 here equals 19,000 there. Now, both approaches get you the same end. The left-right approach, Pacioli called the left-hand side of a debit credit column, or a, a, a two-column approach. He called the left a debit. The right, he called a credit. So all you got to know is the left is debit, the right is credit. And um, in, in all of our textbooks today, we rely on debits and credits to record transactions. But in my class, I tend to prefer what I call the database approach because here we're not using debits and credits. We're just using a, uh, what I call a checkbook way of keeping track of accounts. If an asset went up, we just add it. If an asset goes down, we just subtract it. We get the same result. If people say, well, Kurt, we need to honor Luca Pacioli, we can create a column here called the Pacioli check. In fact, that's what I call it in my class. And, uh, and using this check, we simply use the Excel formula command to take equal. We add up everything on the left-hand side of an equation. And then we subtract the sum of all the liabilities and equity, which is on the right side of the equation, right there, left paren. And if our formula is right, that should be zero, which it is. We can then drag and fill on this uh, drag and fill handle, and we'll see that if that number right there is zero, that our books in, are in balance. If a student made an error, or a bookkeeper made an error, and accidentally entered 240 here, for example, we would automatically know that we made a mistake in our transaction analysis. So when a student comes into my office and says, um, Dear professor, how, how do I balance my books? I'll ask if they've done a, a Pacioli check. And I really call that the Pacioli check in order to honor uh, the father of modern day accounting. So uh, let's correct that. And now life is in balance. In summary, debits and credits are merely a convenient way of keeping track of transactions uh, during the period. And uh, we do so in order to make sure we balance. In the 21st century, with spreadsheets and databases and computerized accounting systems, there's really no real need to know debits and credits as long as you know that the fundamental accounting equation, assets, must always equal the sum of the liabilities and equity. And uh, um, I love teaching this course because debits and credits are sometimes difficult for people to understand. But when I present it the way I've done here today, um, you know, with increases on the left, 
uh, for assets, and if uh, equity goes up, we just add it there as well. But the two-column approach says an increase in the asset goes left, an increase in equity goes on the right. Um, if we were to pay off some of this long-term debt, let's say we paid off 50000 of that, cash would go down and the liability would go down. And we'd put that a credit to cash and a debit to liability. This concludes Lesson 7, uh, using debits and credits to record transactions in the database.